Alrighty, welcome to Rhino School of Rock. And today we're going to be um, making another comparison. This is going to be an interesting comparison. Um, the client was very, how should I say, budget oriented. <laughs> okay, so we were picking out diamonds in the three carat range that were uh, sub three grand in the price all right they really had to keep it under three grand so we're going about trying to cherry pick among the least expensive three carat options and, and there are ones that are even cheaper but you know we, we don't want to enter too far down into the danger zone with regards to quality so we we picked out two stones to bring in for this uh comparison one of them is a 312 EVS1 and the other one a 368 uh, EVVS. All right. And these are the asset results. Just a note on the asset results. No client of ours, when, when, when you guys check out with a diamond on other websites, that's basically it. The deal is done, they send you the diamond. You don't get any of this information or commentary or whatever. And and some people like to buy like that, and that's totally fine with us. We'll sell it to you like that too. But we have a different protocol here, and that is acquiring the diamonds. Our work only begins when you check out, all right, because the diamonds are sent to us to vet, to analyze, and what you're seeing here now is just part of our gemological analysis with regards to cut quality and light performance which is a, which addresses subjects like in emerald cuts uh, about windowing and and whatnot and you know and the like windowing by the way is uh, would be blatant points of light leakage within the diamond which we can see uh, very easily in asset results and show our clients from a scientific standpoint and and then also we're going to see in this video how this translates to practical observation okay so in this first emerald cut here this three uh this 312 that we acquired uh i'm noting that we got um okay reds and dark blues are good because that's light coming in from above all right if we see heavy concentrations of blue so this this one has some concentrations of blue here in the center um, the question that we're going to want answered with that is, does this result in too much head and body shadow blocking light? You know, resulting in an, um, perhaps a, 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 an appearance under the table that's too dark. All right. And so th this is going to be an interesting comparison. We have dark greens in this asset, uh, in this asset image which is indicative of taking light or reflections that are coming in off the horizon and reflecting them back um, strongly through the top, all right? And that, that's a correlation, be, oh, that's something that dark greens are going to give us in asset results. Now, um, light coming in off the horizon generally isn't the most effective place in the you know within our environments that are going to draw bright reflections but i'd rather have them dark green than light green <laughs> okay and then the the reds is light coming from above the zero of uh, the i'm sorry the 45 to 75 degree angular spectrum and then blue is the 75 to 90 degree angular spectrum which is generally indicative of head body shadow uh, although in fancy shapes like emerald cuts and uh, um, you know and uh, ovals and marquee and you know cushions and everything, sometimes blues translate to very bright interiors, and sometimes not, which is why we like to not just look at the asset results, but also see how that correlates to practical everyday observation. So. <clears throat> These are things we're going to be looking for in this 312. Then we got this 368. Okay. So in this 
uh, by the way, the whites in these asset images are areas of uh, what, w what would be considered windowing or blatant light leakage. Um, in the 368, you notice it's, there's, it, it's got some blues going on, but not as concentrated as the 312. There's a little bit of blatant leakage here. By the way, light leakage isn't always bad. It can provide areas of contrast, especially when you have bright areas right alongside of it. So, and then we got some dark greens going on up here. And, and pale blues going around the perimeter of the table facet. So, you know, when I'm having emerald cuts, if, if I have them cut for me, um, you know, it's, it's like as solid red and blue as it can get. So, this is an interesting comparison because uh, <laughs> I don't know what to expect almost. I mean, I kind of do, but... But this is going to be uh, determined as we look at them side by side in the face-up analysis. By the way, if we're cherry-picking diamonds for you guys, um, when it's possible, I'm, I generally call in more than one. There are some companies, you know, a lot of these companies, they want payment for the diamond. They want, uh, you know, before they're going to ship anything, just like they do with every single other diamond vendor on the Internet. you got to order it and pay for it and send it in. What I do for my clients, so um, if I'm feeling iffy about the diamond, is I will, um, I'll call them up and I'll say, by the way, what other diamonds do you have in your inventory that are comparable? And, um, and if they're willing, and, and some of them are, I'll have a second diamond shipped in. Uh, at our expense too, some you know, most of the time. You know, if, if we're uh, if a client requests it and the company won't do it, a lot of times we got to check out with a second diamond if we want more than one to be shipped into the laboratory. All right, but we got two for this analysis, and I'm going to end this here on my commentary on the asset analysis, and we're going to get into some practical observation and see which one of these is more appealing to the eye. Hang with me. All right, so here is that first three carat, um, the smaller of the two. And remember when I said just a, just a few moments ago <laughs> how blues under the table can translate to either bright reflections or too much head body shadow. And well, you're seeing it right along with me here in the video. So would you say there's too much darkness under the table or we got some good bright reflections going on? And if you said the latter, you would be correct. All right. So this is I'm, I'm seeing you're seeing it for the first time right here along with me. Yes, we do see a little bit of dark banding, but it's not overwhelming. OK. And contrast is a good thing in a diamond. It, that's what forms the step patterns in these emerald cuts. So, I'm liking this, all right? And I'm not, you know, the, uh, those bright steps across the belly, a good thing. All right, let's bring the other one into this. This is the 368. Okay. I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing here too. Uh, when you look, this diamond here, I have the prongs pretty strategically planted right on the corners so you're not seeing reflections of the prongs in the diamond. Um, in this one, You see some of the prongs aren't on the corner, particularly on the side here, so you may see a reflection in there. But um, the 368, also doing pretty damn good. Okay, so what I'm looking for here, in the emerald cuts, I'm looking for um, if there's any excessive windowing, 
which I don't see. Or I'm looking for excessive head and body obstruction. So this is, uh, this is kind of a tough call between the two. I'm going to do some further analysis with regards to um, internal graining and stria and see if there's any uh, inclusions that may compromise the structural integrity of the tooth for this client. But so far as the optics go, this is a little bit of a toss-up. All right. You know, in this time of here, there's some points where I want to say, ah, 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 nope, not this one. But then, but then those facets will light up. So, and as you can see, there's not a huge uh, earth-shattering difference between the two in size. There are certain points in this diamond, though, I can see through, I can see windowing occurring. Okay, if you look on the north side of the stone, and in some instances the south, you could see through the diamond back to my finger behind it. See that? So, so, and, and if you notice, we saw some leakage up in that area uh, in the asset results too. So, but overall, two good emerald cuts. And right here, see, this is the most important lighting. Outside diffused daylight. All right, I'm gonna bring them into the office as well now. Okay, so here we are in the office. Bright walls, couple little spotlights above. Let's see, do I have a preference here? No, I do not. We got good contrast with the steps going on. I, uh, I'm, I think I lean a little towards the, the um, 368 in this one, but both of these pretty darn comparable with regards to uh, contrast, step patterning, and light performance. All right. So with these lighting environments being the most important, um, I'm going to cut it here and send this over to the client. All right. What do you guys think? Leave your preference in the comments below. <laughs> All right. Yes, yes, yes.